joining us now is the CEO of the Medical Council, Mr. Daniel Yumbia. Thank you so much for coming in. So we just want to review what we have talked about. Statistics from the Council show that complaints of malpractice have been on the rise for the last uh, three years. That's different from the previous five years where there was a decline. Why is that? Yeah, thank you. And I think uh, I must say that one is because of public awareness. The Council has been involved in... Uh, public awareness campaign to ensure that patients' rights are uh, advocated for. Mm -hmm. We developed patients' rights charter in that patients' rights charter, which we disseminated to patients. Patients have a right to complain. And we developed a complaint form, which is available on our website. So patients are aware that uh, they can complain to the council and the procedure of complaint as uh, lodging a complaint has been made simpler. Okay, so it's I because also, people are more aware now, that's why yes, we're seeing in that. in fact, the media okay. houses have also assisted whenever mm. a case happens and is highlighted, like probably what you are doing today, mm -hmm. I'm sure this week I might, might get another about two to three cases coming up because of this public awareness okay. that uh, they have a place they can complain. Okay, do you really expect Kenyans to believe that despite the huge uh, rise in those malpractice complaints over the last 22 years, that only a single doctor merited removal from the register? Well, one, one, you must understand and appreciate the process of lodging a complaint and the process of handling cases at the board. Most members of the public come to the board or to the council now expecting to be paid compensation. And once you explain to them the processes, this is a professional board which is likely to look into the competence of the practitioner. They hoped to go to the court. Mm -hmm to look for compensation. Mm -hmm. So the law does not allow us, and there is a doctor who spoke earlier, the law does not allow the council to order for compensation. But in the year, this year in May, we, uh, the amendments of the Medical Practitioners Act 2019 gave the board power to enter into mediation agreement or to record mediation agreements that were existing in our regulation. Allow me to hold you there because I want to talk about that and whether that actually serves uh, patients or complements uh, interests. But uh, because of the, the just one case um, that was removed uh, from the register, um, is it not the case that previously doctors were managing to get off quickly because the board as previously constituted was purely made up of doctors. So it's not just that perhaps one, you know, met that very high threshold. It's the fact that there was a cover-up amongst doctors to protect their well, own. I would not say that uh, there was cover-up. And I wish, um, I would invite you when we are doing inquiry and you put away your camera and because the law allows us to do cases in, 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 in private and you get the processes that are followed to determine a case. Some of the cases have merit while other cases do not have merit. And the law gives the council power to determine cases based on various sanctions that are available. So in this case of one, only one doctor having been registered, does not mean the board is being lenient to practitioners because once a doctor's license has been suspended, they don't work within that period. And once we order a practitioner to go for training, this to us is so important that these practitioners' skills, and knowledge, and competencies are improved. And on serving patients, the patients get, get the best out of the, the practitioner. Now, we've gone to a level of ordering people to enter into mediation to compensate. All right? Now, if somebody is going to be compensated by the same person you have deregistered, will the patient be compensated adequately? No. So in that case, we've gone and introduced a new regulation. It is Section 15A of the Medical Act 2019 that directs doctors and health institutions to obtain professional indemnity cover. If practitioners get that cover, they will not even fight where they know they have had such coherence or where they feel that they have done a mistake. And in this case, the insurance companies will take up these cases from hospitals but, but that's, from I mean, regardless, if, if they made a mistake, whether they've got the cover or not, they should certainly pay for it. But let me ask you this. Uh, victims of malpractice have, you know, have said to us that it can often take even up to six months or more before they get a hearing. And this is being interpreted, as we saw in our previous interview, as a brazen effort to stop Kenyans from actually accessing your services and being able to report them. Actually, uh, I must admit that uh, the cases that are pending at the medical council 50% is because of court orders. And you know this country is, is governed by rule of law. 
So in as much as the council may wish to, to co complete cases or determine cases faster, like the case in question, mm -hmm. the, the, the lady was waiting in our boardroom while our lawyer was still in court. We had been served with the court orders and we, we were waiting for the determination of the court order and we couldn't proceed. We were even stopped at, uh, at a tribunal level. By, by, by the law courts, and we cannot proceed because that would be contempt of court. And therefore, it makes it difficult also to tell the council, fast track this case while the, the matter is still in court. Mm. And therefore, I, I think that you, you, you've got to appreciate that our hands would be tied because we would, would do anything against the law. The council, the council um, and its rules um, have been seen to protect doctors, as we've, as we've previously mentioned, and you've talked about the issue of compensation, and I, I want to get to that. Um, and that is one of the reasons people feel that even the way it is structured is pro the doctor. Because, for example, even though you can punish doctors and institutions for malpractice, why, why would the way in which the law was structured and the medical profession was part of this drafting not allow it to order for compensation for victims of malpractice, not even require doctors or, or your counsel to be able to insist that you know, a patient is given corrective uh, medical position. So th the question is, where, the, where is the patient supposed to turn to Could if you I can't even order a corrective medical um, procedure to be done? I'll give you two answers. One, I would say as a counsel, we introduce professional development for practitioners. Every doctor must attain 50 points of CPD in order to, be, to get their licenses given. And some of the courses that are offered by the professional associations are geared towards improving patient care. And therefore, we ensure our, our doctors continuously improve their skill and knowledge. And in areas like OBS and Gain, I saw uh, the, the figures are higher. We've had meetings with the uh, uh, gynecological society to discuss how best to approach the challenges that come with it, within that, 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 that I'm asking practice. about giving a corrective medical procedure. Somebody comes to you, it's very clear something went wrong, but even your counsel cannot say, at the very least, if we're not going to be able to give you compensation, at least let the hospital rectify this problem. No. All the hospitals have been given instructions. Every complaint has been handled on its own merit and that determination made. The, the challenge we have between me and you now is because that particular case You've not read the file. The information that is available to us, and we cannot discuss a particular case on TV, the law doesn't allow. If that case is determined on its own, the information is that most hospitals have been given. You saw us close a few hospitals uh, in the recent past, and we gave them even two weeks or three weeks. This to is comply. a yes or no question. Can you compel hospitals to fix the problem to issue a corrective procedure? We have done. You that do in it. The past. Okay, fair enough. Yes. Um, why doesn't the council regularly publish a list of doctors and institutions that it has sanctioned so that the public can be able to make informed decisions as to where they should go, as to what the history of this doctor is, what the history of this hospital is? Very good. What we have published, and that's a very good point, what we have published is a list of the licensed facilities. But the list of facilities that we have removed from the, the register is also available. And therefore, uh, going forward, maybe, we may have to publish the names of the practitioners who have been sanctioned, just like the way the courts do. What about that, hospitals that have been sanctioned? Exactly. The, is, the list is available. And it, 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 it will be there. Because once we, we say only the following 13 are allowed to see patients and your hospital is not there, it means your hospital has been sanctioned. But now... We, we, we could create another column where we would say the following facilities have been sanctioned. And for that these can, reasons? Yes, that can be available for the public. Why Very hasn't forward. that been done? It has not been done because we thought by removing it from the register, it was implied that this particular facility was not offering You're services. the CEO of the council. What, uh, what guarantee can you give Kenyans? By when can you do that? When well, should Kenyans be able to go on your portal and see I, this hospital you've been sanctioned, has been sanctioned for these reasons? I think what we are going to do, because we have to consult with our lawyers, we also don't want to do things illegally. I must say by beginning of January, this I can give, because I, I must follow the law to ensure that will it uh, also bring legal implications to the council, or will it be unethical to do that? So that will be, will be done. It's arguably unethical not to do it. Mr. Yumbia, well, thank you for your time.